morning. Our dear, dear mother daily provides to us. Be your name. The time has come to know you, to know you, and to show our love. You give us each day our daily praise. Is by the sun and by the rain. Teach us now why we care for you in our work and play. Our dear, dear mother, mother daily provider. Us be your name. The time has I'm come. come. pass the peace and be reminded that love is all around god loves us peace peace <laughs> peace peace and blessings to all <laughs> angels welcome in this sanctuary your and holy tried and from the John Cobb Echo Farm in the Secret Prayer Garden. He's all up there? He is. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. just can't stand me. I'm you can't like, see him because he's I'm out, gonna, out of the... He's over there. Understood. Understood. He, he wants, move it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's... um. There you go. There he is. He, There's Walter. Now you're up. It's a matter of the heater today. We're really all huddled around this little oh. heater. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't make the doesn't visibility... Matter. I can... Yeah, 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 yeah. So how cold is it up there? It's not that cold. Too cold. It's in the it's 40s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And gray. Yeah, yeah. yeah Too yeah. cold, Carol. Low 40s. Oh, that's, that's colder than here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it, it's wet cold, so it feels colder than it really is. Yeah. Well, we feel wet anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would say the news is, is that the, um, the, the cats and the goats continue to um, accompany me as I travel around the prayer stations. And it is a great joy to share it with them. And um, they love it. They, they, you know, they follow me around the five acres. And we stop and they, you know, it's their daily walk. It is. It's great. And um, everything's good here. The goats are like big dogs. Mm -hmm. And of course, they love the um, like blackberry bushes and stuff along the way. Yeah. So they have a snack uh, on on the path 
And they also like to, uh, we have a bridge over a little stream and they cross that. And uh, the other news is that Bonnie has been writing like a maniac. Mm. She has been writing and writing. And what that writing. means is you all need to pray for poor John Cobb, who has <laughs> to read it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I just, uh, yeah. So, um, yes, let's, I think we have. And um, we're very excited. We have um, somebody, our Geek Squad agent is coming from um, Geek Squad. And we're going to hope to set up the big screen and the and the new camera and have a whole animal, whatchamacallit. So that's very exciting. And of course, we continue to talk to the trees. And you know why? They are listening to me. I talk to the stars. They always hear me. The breeze has the time to stop and hear what I say. I talk to them all in love. We sing with the ducks. Quack, quack, quack. They are quacking and quack, quack, quack. We dance with cats and dogs. Oh, All right, I stumbled on this little, it's just a two minute video, and I thought it would be a great way for us to just. Uh, commune with um, those who uh, come from Mexico and um, share this beautiful tradition with us. Is this the right one here? Okay. Yes, it is. Let's, oh, I think I need to share sound. Sorry, just a second. Try it again. Okay. And here, here. One, two, three. <laughs> It's my favorite day of the year. She's the patron of our marriage and our family. And just for me, she's, she's, um, she's everything really. In 1531, uh, Mexico was, was under a lot of strife because Spanish friars were trying to teach the faith and the Aztec people, well, what were they doing? They were sacrificing um, to the gods and they were really pagan. So, um, the uh, Spanish Catholics were trying to evangelize them. Our Lady appeared um, to unite the peoples and a lot of symbolism is, is um, backed up by her image and when the Aztec people saw her, they didn't, she didn't have to say anything. Everything that, um, because they were a people that, that uh, transmitted a lot, of, a lot of their education through, through images, um, when they saw her, she she basically explained who she was. She's a woman who's dancing, and if you know the Aztec people, they they love dancing. So she's a woman in motion. She's dancing. When she appeared, they knew exactly who she was. She's a mestiza. She's mixed um, Spanish and Indian, um, and she's she came to unite the people and hope for them. Today, you see 7,000 people might pass through these walls at Our Lady of Guadalupe. Um, shrine here in Sacramento, but um, she's, she continues to, to be that hope, to, to be that, that mother for all of us, the Juan Dieguitos that, that exist, who are um, perhaps, you know, we have our sadness, we have our, our, our toils, we have our, our labor and um, our difficulties, and we know that she's a mother. Okay. Thank you, Jamie. So it's so beautiful. And um, um, 
I, I think uh, it's just very um, uh, deeply meaningful to many of us. And um, I remember once I, I was interviewing uh, in, for a, a United Church of Christ church in Wisconsin. This has happened to me and Walt twice now. And we were driving along, just, you know, checking out the countryside. And suddenly our car veered and it just opened up to this huge valley. And there was this enormous cathedral just in the middle of the country, just, you know, out of nowhere. And um, we went and it was a new cathedral to Our Lady of Guadalupe. And then that happened a second time um, uh, with a Tibetan temple when we were just driving around south of Ashland, willy nilly, driving, driving, driving. And we turned a corner and we saw this incredible Tibetan Buddhist monastery. So I think um, this, this, uh, bringing forth of, of, of the divine feminine, of the mother, of the, of the, uh, uh, that we recognize her. She is a, a multicultural. She is, she is um, uh, of, of the indigenous wisdom. And um, uh, so she's been deeply meaningful uh, to me. And, um, and it's very meaningful to me that in the same place that I had a vision when I was a little girl in the Dormition Abbey down in the basement, um, when I was there, they didn't have this, but now I've seen photographs and they have put a uh, artwork of the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe down underground Mary's tomb. So I think there's this um, recognition all over the world that um, this, this mother of us all, who is uh, the hope of uh, bringing us together. So um, we have Steve here, so sweet. And maybe maybe by next week you'll be able to see all the animals. We'll just do. so um, we have. Um, I wanted to just lift up this um, uh, that she. Hi, John. Welcome. That um, this term that I like very much in the New Testament, uh, powers and principalities. That uh, we'll hear the story, but the incredible um, uh, evil, evil and trauma and. Uh, genocide, you know, of 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 the uh, Spanish that came in and and killed, you know, just it was just so savage, and um, that in the, um, name of God. in the name of God, and um, makes total sense. <laughs> um, people in the New Testament, of course, were talking about the same kinds of uh, powers, um, forces that we are up against. And that there are these signs of hope, like Our Lady of Guadalupe, um, that um, come in these times uh, when there is no way, and that lead us to a way. Uh, and mm -hmm. that she is also a woman who, who really um, gave us a call to rebuild the church. Okay, so um, uh, would you like to uh, read? Who would like to read? Uh, Carol, why don't you begin reading this? Um, uh, Are you on scripture, Ephesians? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from the Inclusive Bible, verse, uh, chapter 6, verses 10 through 24. Finally, draw your strength from Christ and from the strength of that mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand <laughs> firm against the tactics of the devil. Our battle ultimately is not against human forces, but against the sovereign cheese and powers, the rulers of the world of darkness and the evil spirits of the heavenly realms. You must put on the armor of God if you are to resist on the evil day and having done everything you can to hold your ground. Stand fast then with truth as the belt around your waist, justice as your breastplate, and zeal to spread the good news of peace as your footgear. In all circumstances, hold faith up before you as your shield. It will help you extinguish the fiery darts of the evil one. Put on the helmet of salvation and carry the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Always pray in the Spirit with all your prayers and petitions. Pray constantly and attentively for all God's holy people. 
pray also with me that God will open my mouth and put words on my lips that I may boldly make known the mystery of the good news, that mystery for which I am ambassador and ambassador in chains. Pray that I may have courage to proclaim it as I ought. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Yeah, it's a reminder in our Christmas story um, the tremendous dangers the Holy Family was in, and Herod was, uh, you know, killing babies. And there have just been unspeakable mm. um, kinds of horrors that have happened in our history, and people have uh, continued to uh, pray and to uh, find strength uh, to be guided. So um, let us sing uh, about the the tiny children. Mm -hmm. Luli thou little tiny child, bye bye the Lule. Luli thou little tiny child, bye bye the Lule. Oh, sister. you begin us Jamie and then we'll go um, to Cynthia and then uh, Claudia and then uh, then Brian and just uh, then Lucy well, let's just uh, start saying this and I think it's so important as we all um, are witnessing the sixth extinction of life on earth and all the creatures and all the peoples who are dying mm -hmm. and will continue to die that this is that people have um, been in great despair in other times in history, and we can learn from them and call upon their spirits. So please begin us, Jamie. And you're muted. <laughs> Thank you. The story of Our Lady of Guadalupe's call to action against the powers and principalities, as retold by Bonnie, Reverend Bonnie Tarwater. In 1531, during the cold of winter in what is now Mexico City, an Aztec Indian had a vision of the divine feminine. He had been robbed of every kind of dignity by his Spanish captors, including his very name. His name was Cuatl, which means one who speaks like an eagle. The Spanish conquerors enslaved him and his people and did not allow them to speak their own language or worship their own religion. They gave him the name Juan Diego. He and his people have been conquered brutally in a genocide and taken into slavery. All the old age tactics of annihilation. The people suffered massive injustice, death and destruction. Forced to convert to Catholicism, they were broken down and in despair. One who speaks like an eagle encountered a holy division, a holy vision on his way to morning mass. He was in the same place where the temple of Tonatzin 
the goddess of the earth and corn, had been before it had been destroyed. Tonatzin is the land and fertility goddess, and she was also called Snake Woman. She represented fertility and sacred life. Everyone knew that the site of her temple had it been a place of pilgrimage for Indian people for generations. This was a holy place. Suddenly, one who speaks like an eagle heard music playing on the Tepeyac Hill. He was drawn to climb up to the top by the music. Suddenly, he heard the voice of a woman calling his name, one who speaks like an eagle, curious at where the music was coming from, or who could possibly be calling his name. He kept climbing the hill to investigate. On top of the hill, he saw a woman who was an Aztec Indian like himself with rays of sun surrounding her. She stood on the crescent moon and introduced herself. My son, I have come to help you and your people. I am Our Lady of Guadalupe. Her face was Indian, yet she wore clothes like the Christian Mother Mary. He wondered, why is this Indian woman wearing Mary's costume? Here she was, standing on the same hill top as the temple to Donatsan, but she was both Aztec and like the Christian divine feminine goddess. Both were women, both divine and mothers, who love all their people in the human family as their own children. He could feel her love as she told him he had been chosen by her to help her build a new kind of church. Our Lady said, go you who speaks like an eagle to the Catholic Bishop of Mexico City and tell him he must build me a new kind of church. It will be called by my name and this same holy place of the temple of the goddess Donatsin. Who, me? I am no one, holy mother. How could I speak to the bishop and ask him to build you a church? He will never listen to someone like me. You must ask someone else. She said, I could have chosen anyone. You who speaks like an eagle, but I have chosen you. You. You are my beloved my son, and I believe in you. You have strength you are not aware of, and I will always be with you. You are never alone. He was overcome with her love and message. She was an Indian like him, and he knew he must listen to her. He agreed to her request and set out to meet the bishop. When he arrived at the church of Santiago, he asked to see the bishop. Everyone laughed at him. He waited and waited until finally they allowed him in, but most almost as a joke. He shared with the bishop that he had a vision of the mother of God on the holy hill. And she told him to come to tell the bishop to build her a church. Again, everyone laughed and then rudely told him to get out. He wanted to give up and began to doubt what he had seen and heard and felt. Perhaps he had just dreamt it. Perhaps what he experienced wasn't real at all. He went back to the holy hill where he had seen Our Lady just to check if she might still be there. As he climbed the hill, the holy hill, he heard the same music.
She was even more beautiful and radiant than he remembered. He fell on his knees and wept. I am so sorry, Our Lady, but it is hopeless. They laughed at me and did not believe me. I cannot do what you have asked of me. I am so sorry. My dear son, there, there. It will be all right, I promise. Stand up, hear my voice. You are the one who speaks like an eagle and I have chosen you. You must tell them you have seen me here on this holy hill where our Aztec temple of Tonatzin was before they destroy it. Tell them that I am the mother of God and I want a church be built here for all my children. This is where I will love our people and all people in their struggles. Tell him that he must build my church right away. One who speaks like an eagle went again and he was more determined than before. Again, he shared what Our Lady had said. The bishop said, if you, Juan Diego, want me to believe you, go back to this woman and ask her for a sign. I want proof that her message is really from God. One who speaks like an eagle ran swiftly, like an eagle, back to the holy hill. As he approached, he heard the same beautiful music. He becomes overwhelmed with her beauty and love and kneeled and said, I have failed you again, Our Lady. The bishop said that I must bring him a sign. He wants a sign. Go, my son, over there where we first met and gather the roses you will find there. Collect them in your tilma and share my message. The bishop will believe you. One who speaks like an eagle was amazed for there were indeed an unimaginable beauty of roses growing in the desert during winter, as she said. The beauty of her and the roses gave him strength he did not know he had. He gathered the roses in his shirt, called a tilma, which is made of cactus, and journeyed again to the bishop with his gift of roses. He was allowed in when he said he brought the sign the bishop requested. He opened his cloak and the gift of roses in winter fell to the ground. Everyone in the room was startled by what they saw for on his cloak was imprinted the image of her face, an Indian woman radiating with rays from the sun. The bishop immediately understood the message of Our Lady of Guadalupe and he began construction of a church in her name. For hundreds of years, millions have worshiped Our Lady of Guadalupe, an Indian woman in Mother Mary's costume, who came to a humble slave of the Spanish occupiers of the Americas on the same holy sacred hill where people had worshiped the feminine face of the divine for generations. Her cathedral is on the same spot of the temple of Tenatzin. He who speaks like an eagle, AKA Juan Diego, first saw the vision of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and now we worship her around the world on December 12th, her feast day. She is an indigenous woman brought back. She is a divine feminine face of God. Indigenous people the world over know how to live in harmony with nature and must listen and learn by their wisdom and love of nature. She offers a relationship of love that inspires devotion. She is like a loving mother for those who are in need of unconditional love, those who have not been listened to, those who are left out, and all those who are suffering the violation of un unspeakable injustice and violence. She includes and listens to those who pray to her and she communicates with us in any kind of language, verbal or nonverbal, in order for us to experience her healing love. She is a feminine face of God who promises unconditional healing love in the midst of suffering. She has been moving from the Holy Hill in Mexico City 
throughout the Americas and beyond. Image and presence is now felt around the world. She is the Black Madonna of the Americas, and people make pilgrimages to her in the same way people have made pilgrimages to holy places around our common home. Pilgrims go to the river Ganges in India, Mecca in Saudi Arabia, the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, and to Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico City. She is the face and wisdom of an indigenous woman so needed now. May people from around the world make a pilgrimage to her in our hearts, on Zoom, and in every sacred inch of soil on earth. May Church for Our Hope Common Home bring her spirit and wisdom, intertwining the ancient wisdom traditions with the new story of an ecologic civilization. May her image and artwork guide us in making for the harm empire and colonial powers have inflicted on people, soil and ecosystems. May her story and motherly love heal mothers and children of all species during our planetary crisis, a time of great suffering and turning. We pray to you, Our Lady, Dear Holy Mama, you who are Our Lady, help us. We are afraid and in need of your healing, courage, and grace. Awaken and inspire us, guide and teach us your ways of love and mercy. Guide us as we rebuild a place to love and care for our common home and all your creatures. May you show us here at Church for Our Common Home a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And um, we can go into our prayer time. And um, um, let's see. Um, Walt, would you please read uh, Nancy? We'll begin our um, prayer time. She's not here. Dear Holy One, we come to confess and to ask for forgiveness. You know, we have done, we know that we have done things we should not have done and not done things we should have done. We ask you to forgive us. We ask that you guide us in learning how to forgive others as well as ourselves. Amen. Next question. This is a pastor of prayer, a prayer by Teresa of Avila. God, grant that I may always know myself to be guided by you. Always follow your plans and perfectly accomplish your holy will. Grant that in all things, great and small, today and in all the days of my life, I may do whatever you require of me. Help me respond to the slightest promptings of your grace so that I may be your trustworthy instrument for your honor. May your will be done in time and in eternity by me, in me, and through me. Amen. We pray to develop the fruits of the Spirit within the secret garden of our hearts and our prayer practices here at the secret garden, the prayer garden, this Advent. We pray to develop hope, forbearance, and long-suffering, forgiveness, and love of enemies, Patience, generosity, gentleness, goodness, peace and self-control, kindness, faithfulness, joy, courage, and creativity. Amen. We pray for China and the United States to come together to work to save the earth. We call upon you, Angel Gabriel, this Advent to bless us with visions and dreams. Amen. I invite everyone to unmute and just lift up all those that you would like to send prayers. My brother Pete 
who's in Texas. Walter Bishop. Mm -hmm. My mother. My cousin Clay. My dear friend, Pat. May we join in a silent prayer for our common home, Mother Earth. Okay. Amen, shalom, and blessed be. John, would you um, share a closing prayer? Dear Mother, Father God, you the God of passionate love, we ask for your grace tonight, despite our pride, your forgiveness, despite our doubt. Most of all, we ask for your love to see us through these dark times. May we face whatever is to come in your divine will with courage and open hearts of acceptance. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of God go before you. May the grace of peace go before you. May her love purify. May her blessing remain with you always. May you walk on holy ground. May we all go in peace.